Have you ever felt like you feel more hungry when you're trying to lose weight? Well, for me, I was the same way. Last year in December when I was trying to lose weight, I ended up having too much cookies and cakes because of the holiday parties, just like everyone else does. But what I realized in March, I actually ended up gaining another five pounds within three months. And this honestly started to scare me because I felt like I was losing control of my health. And maybe you were the same way. Maybe you try dieting down, picking the right foods, but you end up just getting angry because you don't see the scale move. And trust me, we've all been there. What if I told you that there's three tactics that you're not using that could make you stay more full on your diet, way less, and also enjoy the tasty food that you love. Well, for me, I was starting to incorporate these tactics and not only was I able to see the physique that I wanted to get, I was also to not feel hungry overall, even if I wasn't trying to lose weight. And once you start incorporating these tactics, these are so dead simple that you can start using it any time when you're wanting to lose weight, no matter what situation that you're in. It sounds too good to be true, right? Most diets leave you feeling hungry and annoyed, making it hard to stick with in the long term. And it's because they lack two factors. The first would be calories, but not in the way that you think. You might know that every food has calories and if you eat too much in general, you'll gain weight. But what you might I know is that there's dozens of foods you can eat massive portions of without consuming a lot of calories. For example, here are two plates of scrambled eggs that look about the same size. But here's the crazy part. The one on the left is about a third of the calories compared to the one on the right. And this normally comes from how calorie dense your food actually is. And on a mental perspective, having this type of breakfast versus this type of breakfast seems to get annoying over time while you're dieting. But if we're only looking at calories, we're missing a big part of the picture. In fact, eating larger volumes of foods helps stretch the stomach and send signals to the brain that you're full, reducing the chances to say you're overeating. So satiety is the second factor to consider when staying on your diet. So if you start using this method, known as volume eating, without a doubt, you can lose weight. So what are the three tactics you should implement so you don't gain weight? The first common pitfall people tend to overlook when losing weight is not carbs, but fats. High fat foods are extremely calorie dense, often leading to overeating and weight gain without you even knowing it. Don't get me wrong, having fats are essential for hormones, absorbing vitamins, and believe it or not, keeping you full. But I think they're overhyped with diets like keto and carnivore to the point where you need to eat about 100 grams of fat a day, if not more, but you only need about half of that to lose weight, depending on your body weight. Besides, it's much easier to eat 500 calories of salt and nuts compared to 500 calories of sauteed broccoli. And I think there's a lot of underrated benefits that most people don't know about when applying low fat diets correctly, such as having more energy, especially when you're working out, and also enjoying large amounts of food while feeling satisfied. Obviously, you shouldn't be switching from something like an avocado to Smarties or Red Vines, so some foods that are great to implement this principle would be having fat-free yogurt and cottage cheese rather than full fat yogurt cottage cheese and having more lean cuts of meat like tuna chicken or ground beef generally under 90 10. So does this mean that you should stop having foods with any fat? Not at all. If you do want to at least keep some fatty foods in your diet like eggs or peanut butter, I use a hack called the bait and switch method. So for the scrambled egg example earlier, instead of having three whole eggs, you can set out one whole egg and cover the rest with egg whites. Another example could be mixing regular peanut butter with peanut butter powder to have a similar taste but getting if not twice the volume. So by incorporating low fat foods in your diet, you can start enjoying bigger portions that keep you full and satisfied. But let me ask you, do you recognize what all these low-fat foods have in common that I just mentioned? That's protein, which is the most confusing factor when dieting. And let me tell you something crazy. Many people struggle to get enough protein in their diet. In fact, the average American eats less than 100 grams of protein a day to hit their goals, which is below even the minimum amount. But why does this matter? If you focus more on carbs or fats than protein, you're more likely to overeat, gain weight, and have more energy crashes, especially if the food is ultra-processed. You also might start losing muscle if you don't focus on your protein intake as well. So much of the potential of you getting the physique that you want drops like crazy. So what can we do about this? If you want to find some more common foods to eat in general, here's a simple list for you guys to take note of. And whatever food that you enjoy from this list, start adding an even amount to each meal. So let's say if you weigh 180 pounds and split that by three meals, you have about 60 grams of protein of your desired food and split that evenly. So it makes it easy for you to stay full and get the physique that you want. So having these high protein foods can help you feel fuller for longer and they'll give you the physique that you want if you do everything else right. But let's face it, Eating only protein can get you so far, and it can be a bit expensive sometimes. So what are other ways that you could feel full without eating a lot of calories? After all, not all of your foods when having meals will solely be just protein. So you have to find other low calorie foods that will keep you full. And it's not just vegetables like broccoli. In fact, if you don't add a variety of these foods, you'll start getting bored with your diet and just go back to bad dieting habits you didn't want in the first place. So what are these foods? Well, there's currently two types of foods I like to incorporate in my diet when losing weight. The first one will be water-based foods. And these foods can apply to generally any other type of food and work well as snacks. They have very little calories because the majority of them are made up of water. Some examples are apples, oranges, strawberries, and watermelon. And the second one would be fiber-based foods. These are generally a little bit less sweet, but when paired up with the right foods, you can add a lot 
lot of volume to your food without feeling hungry at all. So some foods could be like carrots, sweet potatoes, white potatoes, or even butternut squash. And once you start adding a variety of these recipes, you'll actually start creating delicious meals that you can enjoy on your day-to-day -day basis, especially when you're trying to lose the weight fast. And above all, you won't be having as much of bland, tasty food when you start incorporating them the right way. But all this is useless unless if you have some recipes that you really like that make your weight loss journey more fun and enjoyable. Well, what if I told you that there's actually a bunch of dessert recipes that you can start incorporating now with these principles that can start helping you lose weight? Well, if you want to figure out what those are, make sure that you check out this video right here that goes in detail on all that, and I'll see you there in a second.